Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Paul Johnson, who is CEO at Power Metal Resources. How are you today, Paul? I'm good, Jack. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, you got some news uh, that you hit the market with today uh, regarding uh, your company. You could just run us through that. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, we've uh, done two RNSs today so far. I apologise about back-to-back RNSs, but sometimes they can't be avoided. We started uh, at 9 o'clock this morning with an update on uh, Botswana and the Malopo Farms Complex project where we have an effective interest of uh, 51%, or we will do soon, once we've paid for the uh, upcoming drill programme to happen. Uh, we did some uh, some work, uh, AMT work, uh, I'll give you the acronym, uh, where we were refining the targets for drilling in the uh, near-term drill program. Uh, it's very technical stuff, but what we've effectively been able to do is refine the targets. Uh, we've been able to uh, improve our kind of understanding of the uh, of the prospectivity and the geological structures. Uh, these are very large scale uh, nickel sulfide prospective targets that we're going for, and any information you can get before you sink the drill holes in the ground is always useful. Uh, the, uh, our partners, the Kalahari Key team, are hugely enthusiastic about what they're finding. All the evidence that we have as we move along each step of the process seems to reinforce the prospectivity and potential of this uh, opportunity. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great piece of news, uh, a bit technical, so I don't know how much the market you know, uh, followed it or understood it uh, or even read it at 9 o'clock in the morning, but we'll see. Uh, of course, the real uh, truth machine, as uh, someone said to me recently, is the drill turning and actually getting the core out and seeing what's there. And that is something that we're very optimistic to start very soon. So uh, once the drill starts to turn, I'm sure the excitement and focus will build on that because it's a very large uh, nickel sulfide potential uh, set of targets that we've got there and uh, we'll just have to see what happens uh, so uh, after the 9 o'clock release we hit an 11 o'clock release with our partners Red Rock Resources uh, we have a joint venture in Australia Red Rock Australasia Limited and Power has a 49.9% interest and we secured another big license application uh, in uh, Victoria, the heart of the uh, hot postcode as it were for uh, gold uh, exploration at the moment. Uh, another 309 square kilometres added to the existing 11 licence applications means we have 12 applications covering just under 2,200 square kilometres. What happened is we did some work uh, on each of our 11, now 12 projects, and we identified uh, the prospectivity, historic gold production, historic mining, historic sampling, and so on. Uh, we then layered on some fancy technology on top of this for this particular license area, and we found that there was uh, prospectivity that perhaps hasn't been identified before, and that that prospectivity went into neighbouring areas to the west. So rather than just sitting there and thinking about things, we went and immediately paid another uh, license application to cover that prospectivity. So, yeah, Australia's building dramatically. We have one of the largest land holdings in the area, uh, and we have applications in process, and we're looking forward to when uh, we can get uh, licenses granted, of course, because that means we can move forward subject to uh, covid 19 with ground exploration. Uh, all the data that we're building from all this uh, historic analysis is uh, showing that there's a, there's a huge amount of gold across our license areas and uh, from the uh, historic mining and uh, all the records. And we just uh, want to go on and, and see what we can do with that. We're also looking at the corporate angle with Australia. Uh, and there's huge amounts of interest from North America, as we've seen recently with uh, a number of deals that have taken place, corporate deals over Victoria, uh, Victoria Goldfield assets. Uh, so we're looking at that as well. So, yeah, lots and lots going on at the minute, Zach. Right. So you've got all these uh, license applications with the uh, Blue Whale, Blue Chip, Blue Sky. Uh, that's all that's all going on. Uh, you haven't got Blue Monday yet, which I hope we can name the, the next one that one. I think that would be quite cool. But uh, the, um, I mean, as there's so much going on, what do you think that investors should particularly look at? Because you're spinning a lot of plates uh, here. Yeah, it does. It does seem like that. And to a certain extent, when you have so many items of news coming out, you 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 can create a bit of a fog about the company. But what we set out to build uh, from the off really was not just another junior company with one project, 
hoping and hoping you know, for for a long time that it could strike something. You. We, uh, I've always felt that was a really risky approach, just having such a narrow focus. Now, it can be very good if you find something very valuable and are able to move it forward, but it's a concentration of risk. We always wanted to build a diverse play. We always had in our minds a dramatic target of being you know, another mid-tier type operation. What we never really anticipated was how bad the conditions would be in 19 and, of course, in 20 with the COVID situation. And those bad conditions yield for the more gregarious uh, businesses, yield opportunities to acquire interests or earn into interest that uh, they would not normally have access to. So we've been able to build a portfolio of very significant uh, projects pretty much across the board in fairness. So I don't want to apply favoritism to any of the projects at the minute. What I want to say is this, that we are diversified. So our shareholders are protected. They have access to precious metals, base metals, strategic metals, all sorts of different things in different jurisdictions. So it's a good place to be. Uh, for, there's no one project will, will, will sink us but it might make us fly. Any one project could make us fly. And uh, at the moment, we're particularly excited because of the, you know, the upcoming big nickel sulfide drill uh, in uh, Botswana and uh, also with our partners, Pretoria Gold, uh, and the Haneti project in Tanzania. Those are big things. The, uh, the stuff that we're doing in Australia is quite amazing, and uh, we're continuing to build that into a very, very substantial uh, business with both corporate and exploration opportunities are plenty. Uh, and then we're, we're doing a lot of work in North America with the Alamo Gold Project in Arizona and with this new due diligence project in Canada, the Silver Peak Project. There's lots of uh, precious metal exploration happening right now. Important because that will yield, dare I say, new flow and, and feed some interesting stuff out to the market. So pretty much across our business we're active. We still have our focus now on, on building ourselves towards a big company status. And we do that, as I say, with one project, you do it with a number. And you need some of these things to come off to make it happen. So we're, we're pushing as hard as we can to, 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 to make that uh, discovery uh, or discoveries, which we have as our tagline for the business overall. So uh, a mini conglomerate in a year's time, I mean, that's what you're trying to do? Yeah, okay. well, the best way to accelerate that is to find something big, because we find something big in this portfolio of currently six projects with two under due diligence. Find something big, our valuation leaps on the back of a major discovery, and we, uh, and that, of course, then filters down into the rest of our business, and you start to discover more things when you have more kind of uh, uh, company size, more strength, more financial prowess, and so on. So I would, yeah, mini, mini conglom, that would, that would be a nice target to have. I mean, given the, uh, the amount of time I'm spending on this, I, I, I certainly hope that is the outcome because the board of uh, power have a lot of the stock. I personally hold around 7% of the stock. And uh, if it comes off share price-wise, uh, then uh, we will benefit significantly as a result. All right, just a final question. Um, I noted, um, and I've seen, seen some reaction as well, that uh, Elon Musk of uh, Tesla has been calling out for... Uh, mining companies to deliver um, more nickel uh, and so maybe is that a, is that uh, an area that you could oblige on <laughs> well it's, it is absolutely true that n nickel is a major issue uh, going forward because there aren't the uh, supply sources and i think anyone who's fortunate enough to find uh, a major nickel sulfide discovery in the right jurisdiction uh, and is uh, uh, that will draw dramatic interest there uh, from from large players in our in our space. So it, it has to be for any company like ours where we have access to two nickel sulfide uh, significant drill programs in the, in the near term. It has to be a major focus. Paul Johnson, CEO at Power Metal Resources. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.